Today, we are announcing the indictment of a federal savings bank on mortgage fraud, securities fraud, and conspiracy, a federally chartered bank that has been catering to the Chinese immigrant community since 1984. They kind of did everything and more that you would want a bank to do, and yet they were rewarded with indictments from the DA of New York. So that didn't make a lot of sense until you started to look a little deeper into it. And then you see, well, in our view and others' view, Cyrus Vance Jr., the DA of New York, was also looking to make his mark as the guy that brought a bank to its knees in the wake of this crisis. So he chose this little bank. And then the sort of racism that was really kind of in this, in this trial, starting with the, the uh, perp walk, you know, you see that in the film. When Vance announced the indictments, he chained together more than a dozen low-level, mostly former employees of the bank and paraded them before the cameras. Um, these were not hardened criminals. These weren't murderers. These were people charged with extremely petty fraud. Uh, one journalist says that, that if it had been black employees chained together like that, they would not have made that mistake. They would have immediately seen how racist that was. Under his purview and jurisdiction, he has Wall Street and all the big banks. And these banks actually admitted to wrongdoing in the congressional records. They were the banks that also did a lot of subprime lending none of which our bank did. This is a small bank in, in a uh, minority community which he thought that, the, uh, that he could uh, easily accomplish his purpose, and which is to cause the bank to fail. It was really, really tough. Um, the way I describe it is it was like I was living in two worlds because this was happening to my family, me, um, but at the same time, I really enjoyed my career as a prosecutor um, at the DA's office. I think he thought we would immediately collapse after the indictment. No bank survived uh, a criminal indictment. Uh, uh, yes, they have indicted a bank before, but indicting a bank usually caused the bank to fail within three months. And not only did we survive, we were able to um, be strong enough to fight back. There was no choice, and you say you pay a fine and admit to a uh, crime. This is a really strong, uh, um, honorable, courageous, and funny family. You always said to me, if you come work for the bank, <laughs> the benefit will be you have a nine to four job. Nine oh, to four? He yeah, four. He said nine because, to four. Yeah, because a long time nine, ago people could leave at job. three for the bank. He said you can have children, you can have a family. You know what he said to me? He said, if you wish to work with me, remember this is your own choice. And don't think it's going to be easy. You gave me two different, different stories. I just felt very, very upset, and then the family honor, you know, you don't want to lose face. So this doc documentary actually felt, makes me feel that I gained my face back. There was this feeling that whatever their discomfort personally about being in this film, that what was at stake here was really uh, important, and not just important to them, and their bank, but to their community and what it had to say. The Chinese uh, people are uh, generally very reticent and, uh, and it, to a great extent, to, uh, to our discredit, we don't uh, participate uh, in uh, government uh, functions. We don't unite and we don't uh, tend to exercise our civil responsibility of, uh, of voting. Uh, as uh, I think as Plato, the Greek uh, great philosopher, said that if you live in a democracy and you refuse to participate, 
uh, in the de democratic process, you will end up being ruled by someone inferior than you are. And, and this is a very good illustration.